tonight because we want to honor John Dingle. And everybody that's a progressive in Michigan has honored John Dingle in some way or another. But I have gotten to know John Dingle because of my involvement with the Washtenaw County Democratic Party. And when you're part of the Washtenaw Democratic Party, you're blessed by having a congressperson who is literally a legend to Congress be the person that's, you know, the representative from the area. And one of the things you also get to see is a side of John Dingle that not everybody else gets to see. And it's, not only is he this, like, legislative giant, but he's also one of the funniest people you've ever met. And so while, you know, John Dingle has done things like Sign, you know, been involved with the Clean Water Act and the Civil Rights Act and the Children's Health Insurance Program and the Endangered Species Act and the National Environmental Protection Act and the Pollution Prevention Act and the FDA Food Safety Modernization Act and the Energy Policy and Conservation Acts of 75 and 76 and not last but not least the Affordable Care Act. Yeah. This is yeah. Yeah. So he does all of this stuff. And then he retires and he like dominates Twitter. <laughs> well, that's awesome. So tonight, we would like to honor John Dingle with a title, as, as LOL GOP says, would have confounded the founding fathers with the title of the Dean of Twitter. So if you allow me <laughs> Sir, it is a well-deserved, well-deserved honor. So, we're going to have uh, Congressman Dingle read some of his tweets. These are some favorites that we picked out. Um, we hope you'll enjoy them. Uh, I'm going to hand the microphone over to him. Do you have a few things to say that we can get started when you're ready? Well, first of all, Chris, thank you for what you do and for what our Democrats out here do. Thank you, congratulations, and as a private citizen, I'm here to thank you all for what you do and what you have done to make this a better area and to make this a better country. All I, Debbie and I can say to you is thank you and God bless you. Now, having said that, uh, I am a private citizen. And that's a pretty nice thing because it means Deborah now does the work. At least, at least that's what we're saying. Now the harsh fact of the matter is that tweeting has got to be something that the Republicans hate. And it, it, it means that you tell the truth and they don't like it. And you, Renee and Matt, not only do you serve great libations, but you also give us a wonderful place to gather and to be Democrats and to see our friends and to be with you. Thank you for all that you have done for us over the years. I, I won't object to either one of you blushing. Now, having said that, bad news. We're going to have to redo our tweets. Simple fact of the matter is, the Tigers have lost. And the hard fact of the matter is, that this is a bad time for them to do it. But the season ain't over, and we're going to clean our clock, and we're going to see to it that the Tigers wind up the way we want them to wind up. So. I, uh, I, have, I am now a private citizen, and I have left you the greatest thing that I've ever had to serve you in the Congress, the lovely government. And you're going to find she's nicer, prettier, smarter, harder working, and more able than her husband. And she will serve you well. I'm going, to, I'm going to, Chris, with thanks to you and also to your wonderful wife and to all, of, I'm going to read these to you. You can feel free to break in if you want. Don't throw me out on my head. I, I dent easily. And, uh, Chris, at the right time, too, I hope that we will introduce our state reps. Have we done that yet? We will do that. Okay. They are... They are worth an introduction because they're doing something wonderful for us in an awful place against perfectly terrible people. So when the time comes to thank them and to thank them with the other elected office holders, I hope you'll do that. 
All right, I'm going to read these. Don't throw me out. Uh, and, and be nice to me. And, uh, so these are just you, you may you may make a comment if you choose, and I will uh, yield the floor quickly to all or any. So here is the first. The key to being 88 years old and staying up to watch the Tigers play West Coast night games is to take no less than three naps during the day. I learned that from, from Reagan. He didn't watch baseball. Chris says he's going to help me. Thank God, because I'm all thumbs. All right, next one. Working on speech to an editorial full of congressional interns tomorrow. Staff, it should be less A, more B. We have two. I'll let you pick which is which. I'll be very truthful. I don't know where they got those pictures in the cover. <laughs> They're almost anywhere they can to spoil the party for Democrats. <laughs> I, you're observing that Chris is a man of enormous patience here. Next twit. Staff has now informed me of what a Kardashian is. I'm only left with more questions. <laughs> Do any of you wish to add either questions or answers? <laughs> I, I don't know whether the story is true or not, but I gather that uh, they do occasionally blunder into the wrong bed from time to time. <laughs> and if any of you are disposed to come home with me, I'm probably going to need some protection from the lovely Deborah who will have some things to say. Chris? You're good. You're on the next one. Okay. All right. The next one is, 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 is something about which I'm rather proud. My dad started on it years ago, back with Harry Truman in 1943. His son picked up the cudgels, and we've had an orderly flow of Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, and all of these things until we have finally come to what they now call Obamacare or whatever you want to say. But the simple fact of the matter is it's going to do something for our people that they desperately need. No longer are you going to have to die before you can get medical care. So. It is not often you can be proud of posting a TBT, but today is no ordinary Thursday. Thank you, POTUS. <laughs> the president and his administration worked their hearts out to get that for us. And we can know that Americans are going to that care. They're not going to die on the way into the operating room. They're not going to see their health care canceled because they have a pre-existing condition. Their kids are going to get to stay on until they're 26. These things are important. They are part of the quality of life and the dignity of the American people. They are something that the Republicans are out to destroy and are bragging that they're going to see to it no longer exists. It will be our task in the next election to see to it that they do not right. do this. <laughs> and you, my wonderful friends here in Washington and Ann Arbor, are going to be the people who are going to lead that charge right. and protect us against that. And more importantly, to protect those who have the least and need the most. So gird your loins, get your arms strong, and let us clean their clock for the fall post.
One of the first experiences I had when Dad went to Congress when I was a little boy was Washington Summer. I couldn't believe it. And one of the interesting things was the White House and the Capitol and the other public buildings were not at that time uh, air conditioned. So getting into Washington occurred the 1st of January and on the 1st of June everybody got the hell out because it was just too simply plain hot for anybody to do anything. Now, so here is the next tweet that I think you'll find if you've been to Washington in the summer. It has a certain point to it. Back in D.C., and it's harder than the bells of hell in this unbearable swamp. Nothing makes you miss a Michigan winter quite like a D.C. summer. <laughs> Take my words, I've gone through both, and I know which I will take. <laughs> The next one is... <laughs> Gosh, did I screw up? No, no, you're perfect. This is so awesome. They're reading it behind you. <laughs> I told Chris I didn't have eyes in the back of my head. <laughs> All right, the next one. Wife is working late tonight. Might eat ice cream for dinner. YOLO. For those who need it, you only live once. All right, the next here. Uh, today is like this, this picture and this particular tweet come about on a day that was of importance. She and I both got a medal, and quite frankly, she was probably worthy of it. I probably wasn't. Yeah. But, but here it is, and you make what you can of it. If you want to throw me out, it'll be time. <laughs> Today is also likely the only day that Meryl Sweep and I will be wearing the same, same thing. So, who wore it best? Or you might say, who filled it best? <laughs> Congressional Medal of Honor. This reminds me that was the Congressional Medal of Honor. All right, now, all of you know that, that when the year ended, I had a great new acquaintance with hospitals and hospitalizations. And so I was sort of put under the covers in the local hospitals in Washington. And happily, I had gotten Obamacare through so that we could have reasonable expectations of a certain amount of care. In any event, this goes with the picture which you'll see, I hope, behind me, Chris. It says as follows, yelling at hospital TV as House debates yet another bill to gut the Clean Water Act. Nice of the nurses to check in with me, although I am fine. <laughs> Okay, let us skip. Yeah, we're gonna do this one next. Okay. Chris is rescuing me from one of my mistakes. No, my <laughs> 313 years ago today, Cadillac landed on the banks of the Detroit River. And this, for the benefit of any of you who might have doubts, I wasn't there at the time. <laughs> so to all concerned, particularly in Detroit, happy 313th birthday, Detroit number 313. Yeah, right. And my beloved friends, we're going to bring Detroit back. Right. Okay. I'm not quite sure what this means. You may attach whatever meaning to it you desire. And Chris, I'll count on you to referee the matter. The, 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 uh, begins with this. Scoop! Area retirement still alive. Hangs out with friends. Well, tonight it's true. I've got lots of friends. God bless you.
let me explain that one. So basically, the Washington Post gossip page decided to uh, check in on John Dingle when he was hanging out with some of his staffers. And, I don't know. I just love this. <laughs> that, that. I got it. And this is the last one. Okay. I uh, am ready to defend on this one, and you will note I brought my walking stick in case it's necessary. <laughs> uh, I, I'm now reading. Proud Michigan resident and dear friend Graham Davis. Graham, you heard? He's not. Got a bulldog today and named it Dingle. I see no similarities. <laughs> God love you all. You've been wonderful, good sports. Put up with a lot of foolishness on my part. And I want to tell you how proud I am of your friendship. And as a retiring private citizen, I want you to know how much I love you and how grateful I am to you. And now I'm going to introduce to you somebody you know. She gets around all over the place. Frankly, she wears me out. Um, she's a wonderful, loyal, Democrat, and a dear friend of each and every one of us, and somebody who understands government from almost every aspect. She will serve us well. I'm proud she's there, and I'm grateful that she has friends like you. Thank you all. Let's hear it for the lovely Deborah. Believe it or not, he was nervous about tonight. So you did great. Yes, you did great. Yeah. Right. I'd like to ask who here is more surprised about that statement than I am. <laughs> and actually, since Chris, Chris is the one that picked the quotes or the tweets that he was going to use, yesterday on the, on the way to the airport, my staff called me and said, your husband's a little peeved at you and has been busy tweeting all morning at the airport. <laughs> and it actually was uh, such a comical that it made the Wonkad and the Hill, etc. as he said he was tired of waiting for me, that you could read, I'm doing this from memory, that if you're hanging out, you can go to the uh, Hudson shop, which is where you buy papers, and, and read, the pay, read section A without paying for it. And then he said you can also buy candy too uh, but you should pay for that. And then he told everybody it was just a joke. He does always pay for the paper. Then he took a picture of the airplane and said, Deborah, the airplane and I have determined we're leaving with or without you if you don't get here soon. So my staff sent him a note, and I said, I've been working on the 21st century cure. My staff said to him, she's finished both, she's on the way. And then we took a selfie and he said, the good thing is she's here, the bad thing is she took my candy. 